Hi and welcome to episode 52 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Is Reportage and This Is Reportage family and I'm a photographer too. Excited to chat to the fantastic Christoph Kleis today. Christoph was in our top 30 photographers of 2019 and has won a pretty staggering nine reportage and six story awards. He's also a fantastic family photographer and has already won two reportage family awards and two family story awards on our sister site, This Is Reportage Family. Tune in today as Christoph talks about letting your clients be themselves, learning to fail, a momentous event that led to him making a 180 in his life, the story behind a couple of his wedding awards and a family story award too that features a cat in every frame, tips on submitting, what makes him happy and so much more. Hey Christoph, how are you doing? Hi Alan, I'm fine, thank you. A little bit nervous but... Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah, I get that. I I'm 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 nervous as well. I get nervous for everyone, which is a bit bizarre. But yeah, it's all good. It's all going to be very relaxed. Even after fifty uh, episodes, I, I know. Yeah, even after fifty, it's it's surreal. It's surreal. Um, but yeah, don't worry. It's all going to be very okay. very relaxed. All good. Thank you for joining me. It's lovely to talk to you. Likewise, Alan. Oh, that's cool. Because you're over in you're in Belgium, aren't you? I'm, I am. Yeah. Oh, cool. Whereabouts in Belgium are you? Um, I don't know if you know the map of Belgium, but I live right in between Ghent and Bruges. Okay. No, I, I, I did just ask that, didn't I? But I, I know nothing about the geography of Belgium. That's really bad, isn't it? It's bad. I need to go. I'd love to visit one day. I've, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe you should do it once. Maybe a yeah. TRR meeting in Belgium or something or in the Netherlands. That would be very cool. I'd love to do that. After all this, you know, awful year and time is over. Yeah, definitely do that. Yeah, I think I... my only experience of Belgium is watching um, in Bruges in uh, the film. Ah, okay, the movie with uh, oh, what, what's his name? Um, yeah. What is oh. the actor? No, I can't remember now either. It's yeah. an Irish actor, isn't it? The Irish mm-hmm. actor, yeah. No, Colin Farrell. Yeah. Yes, that's yes, it, isn't it? it? Yeah, that's a good film. Have you seen it? Uh, I've seen it. But uh, the people in Bruges didn't really like the movie. No, I bet. It's very... It's very... Because he always said it was a shithole or something, but okay. <laughs> right, it's, yeah. It's not it's... the most popular movie in Bruges, so... Oh, okay. I understand that. It's very violent as well, isn't it? It's very violent. Oh, oh. But but Bruges looks beautiful. It looks beautiful city. It is. It is. Yeah. Do, you do, do you do many weddings there? Uh, no, I haven't. But um, sometimes I get an email from couples from for example uh, america uh, who do a city trip in bruges and want me okay. to have a, like a family session with them while they're in there so oh this nice that's cool yeah that's so that's like kind of like vacation photography almost like family photography but on vacation as well yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how they find my name but they do <laughs> somehow so uh, uh, i have that's sometimes cool. the opportunity to go to bruges to shoot some um, yeah oh, that sounds that sounds really fun. That sounds really fun. Yes. Um, and which came which came first for you? You know, the, was it was it wedding photography or was it um, family photography? Which which came first for you? Uh, the weddings actually were last. All oh, right. Okay. I, I started uh, photography um, like a side job, and I took every assignment I could get, like newborns, families, except weddings. I didn't. Um, would like I wasn't confident enough to do a wedding uh, mm. at this, that moment because you know when it goes wrong you can do it back you know mm-hmm. um, yeah. so it started actually with family photography okay until okay. I was very bored at it <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I switched to uh, the weddings okay and how how long ago was that when did so when did you begin photography because I, I I love on your website bio, you say, um, you say about a specific moment that your childhood dream to become a photojournalist popped up again and decided to make a 180 turn in my life. And it sounds quite a, a, quite a momentous event that you're alluding to. Can you tell us about that, what happened? Well, that moment you just talked about was actually in, uh, in Libya. Right, okay. I, uh, well, I, was, oh, I wasn't quite happy when I was around 25, 26 Basically, my, my life was every day the same. I played soccer almost every day. Okay. So my life was like working and at the evening playing soccer. The day after, the day after, just the same. So I was like 
I, I wasn't depressed or something, but I didn't like my life at that moment. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I was talking about um, uh, buying a house and uh, getting some uh, get get some children. And I needed to to break out in any way. And um, so I bought a. Do you know the little French car, the deux chevaux? Oh yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. The the the, the little iconic car. And I drove it from Brussels to halfway to Africa. Wow. Wow. What a trip. Yeah. It was um, uh, Tunisia, Libya, um, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Benin. Wow. And um, on that trip, I started reflecting on my life and what should I do. And it was a childhood dream to become a photographer. And on that, that trip, I decided to study photography and evening lessons when I got back in Belgium. Okay. Wow. Gosh, man, why, that is a momentous trip. Then, so that was you and your wife, was it? Was it? No, no, two? no. It was actually a, a, with an organization. We were with okay. twenty of, of those cars, and it okay. was a trip of from uh, four weeks. Wow. Cool. Uh, wow. Big stories. <laughs> we got held hostage for uh, for a week and uh, <laughs> by the troops yeah. of Gaddafi. So it That's was amazing. It, yeah, it was a big journey. Literally held hostage. Uh, yeah, we couldn't. We wanted to cross the border to Niger, but uh, the troops of uh, the former colonel, colonel uh, Gaddafi took away our passports and we couldn't cross the border. So we were there for like a week until we ran out of water and food and we had to turn back to uh, to the capital, to Tripoli in the north. Right. Wow. So, what? That's <laughs> stressful. What an adventure, though. That's a proper yeah. adventure. And then we bribed the generals. To fly us and with the cars to to Niger eventually, so it was oh, wow. a big journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story as well, though. Yeah, great story. Yeah. <laughs> so then you got you got back home from that trip. How then? And you wanted you wanted to be a photographer. How did you get into it? You know, how did you get your first um, photography jobs and things? What did you do? Well, I started. At first, I started taking the lessons because I never heard of ISO or shutter time. I didn't know anything about photography, so I started the lessons. And after a year or two, um, my um, uh, my teacher, um, he was a wedding photographer, and he was in a in a divorce, and he didn't have time. So he asked me while I was still a student to shoot a wedding for him. Oh, and that's cool. how it how it started to um, how I started to become to take um, more assignments. Uh, for me uh, okay what was that wedding like you must have been pretty nervous awful. doing that wedding it was awful <laughs> i feel sorry for those people i did that because i i had a lousy camera a 400 euro camera with a pop-up flash i was <laughs> i feel i feel sorry for those people it was awful <laughs> <laughs> i bet i bet they still love their photos christoph i bet they do no, I, I don't think so alan <laughs> but it was it was the beginning of my career Right, okay. How many years ago was that then? Uh, 2011, so it's almost my 10th year as a photographer. Okay, wow, wow, 10 years, and what a year for our 10th year, you know, I bet we, we, none of us could have expected the 10th nope. year to be nope. like this. How, you know, obviously we can't avoid the question, how how has it been for you in 2020, you know, how have you, how have you been coping business-wise and mentally, you know, have you been okay? I am okay. Uh, I have no health issues, nor does my family have. So that's a positive thing. Mm. Um, Business-wise, I changed tactics this year. Um, last year and the previous years, I was just waiting for an email for clients to, to do an assignment. Now I did exactly the opposite. I am, um, like on Facebook, I posted some, like it's good, good weather this year, uh, this evening, why don't you do a, a photo shoot? And I invited the people to come over instead of waiting for them. Okay, yeah, a lot more proactive. And has that has yes. that been working well for you then? Yeah, I, I had assignments every week since between between the two lockdowns, so it wasn't oh. bad. That's good. I mean, that's so interesting you saying that as well because I think 
I think it's very natural for us to get almost complacent, you know, when we get inquiries coming in and mm-hmm. we feel like we don't need to be, you know, very proactive and in, in all on our marketing. But yeah, just do, being a bit proactive like that can make all the difference, can't it? Well, it, it was necessary because in one week time, my whole schedule for the next of the year was, was cancelled. So mm. I had literally no jobs. So I had to be proactive. Mm, but that's good even some people even if they have to be they just don't they'll still you know have their head in the sand and i understand that as well i'm not saying any there's no right or wrong i understand but i'm not this kind of person i want to keep on moving you know yeah that's so good that's a great great way to be have you have you been able to shoot um any weddings at all this year uh eight actually oh wow okay that's not too bad not not too bad, but it was yeah not the full day weddings, just um, the civil wedding and some you know couple pictures or family pictures afterwards. That's it. Right. Okay. No oh. parties. No. Oh yeah, and I miss that. I miss that. I've only only shot two weddings now in the whole of this year. Yeah. Mental. Everybody cancelled, or wasn't it allowed to? to- uh, yeah, they're virtually all postponed. You know, a okay. couple cancelled. Yeah, virtually all postponed, but. You know, we'll have to see what next year is like. I'm going to be positive. Next year is going to be good. It's going to be good. But... Next year is going to be super busy with all the, the weddings from this year also. Mm. So let's hope that they, they don't cancel this one. These, yeah. So. yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, yeah. Um, Christoph, I'd like to ask you about a couple of your specific repertage awards, actually. So um, on our wedding site, you've won nine repertage as well as six story awards, which is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um but the couple I love the most uh, are of yours, I love the black and white one of the, in the ceremony, like h- really high up. I think it's the processional. I think. Um, do you know the uh, one I mean? In in the church where the the father yeah. the father of the bride and the walk down the aisle. Oh, that's it. Yes, and you're taking it quite really quite far uh, and quite high. It looks it's amazing. I love that. Um, but also I love the re- recent one of yours as well with the the back of the lady and she's got the marks on her back from the chair, I think. Yeah. I love that. That's cool. Can you talk to us about, you know, both those shots? Or maybe about just like how you got them or your thoughts about them, what was happening? Um, well, let's start with the the lady the lady in pink with her cool. the marks on her back. Yeah. Um, it was shot this August, actually, on a, on a wedding. Oh, cool. And, uh, those, recent. Yes, very recent. And those people, uh, after the civil wedding, they had a little reception with just 20 people, just family. Uh, it was a, recept- a two-hour reception. And I was actually getting bored after two hours because there's nothing to do. Mm-hmm. They're just sitting on a table. They, they, they weren't allowed to move. So it was uh, that's a bit tough. boring for me. Yeah, and all of a sudden I noticed uh, the back of this lady, and was like, uh, I, I reminded uh, a quote um, like, um, "Shoot how it feels like, not how it looks like." You know the quote. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed the marks on her back. Said, yes, this is it. So I kept, <laughs> I kept myself busy for five minutes shooting this image. <laughs> That's cool, though. I think a lot of people wouldn't even notice those marks. I think it's, it's such a great observational capture. It's great. I love that image. But uh, yeah, it was just a moment. Yeah, I, I don't know how it got. It, it got my attention, but all of a sudden, yeah, I saw it and said, "Yeah, this is this is." It's mm, cool. And uh, did you try different? compositions and things i love the symmetry of the of your actual award-winning image of, of her back i mean that's uh, that's what really works i think yeah i tried different compositions um from above from lower light to left uh, adding more people to it but now it's more symmetric you know mm, it's very cool i love that great uh, and what about and what about that church uh, award as well i love that um that was another story um that was a um, a Belgian groom and a Russian bride. So, okay. so uh, the Russian family came over to to Ghent in Belgium for uh, this wedding, and uh, you know those Russians they like <laughs> they like to do it big. So they yeah. did it in a very big one of the biggest churches in Ghent. So they had the opportunity to do this big entry, but they also hired a videographer team from Russia. There were four of them and two photographers. So I was actually the second one. Right. So this gave me the opportunity to go right in the back of the church, uh, way up front, to shoot this particular image. 
Well, the first photographer did the entry from the lower level. Okay, yeah. Very cool. So, so I, I like this one because it's so big. It, yeah. it is. It's epic. It's epic. Yeah. Uh, and I, again, it's it's. I, I don't know what I, I've only just thought that the two images that I've asked you about, they both have real kind of symmetry to them, don't they? They are symmetrical. Oh yeah, yeah, that's I, true. I think that's something that I'm drawn to. I think I love that. I, I just, I just think, I just love that. They're both brilliant images. Um, yeah, thanks for talking about them. If anyone's listening now whilst uh, cooking or or washing up or anything, I, I do listen to podcasts a lot while washing up, but head head to the site, this is reportage.com and I'll include those images there that Christoph was just talking about. Um Christoph, let's change tack. Let's change tack. Okay. Um can you tell me something that you're truly awful at? What do you mean by awful, awful? Like really bad. If you're bad at something like you're awful at playing tennis or something. Okay, really bad at oh. all. <laughs> um, I'm not good at talking about my emotions. Oh, That's okay. something I need to learn. I'm a bit introvert. And right. photography learned me to be more extrovert, but I still have some work to do. Okay. But you sound, you. we've never spoken before, and no, you're very never naturally talking. No, never. And you're naturally talking to me. Like, this feels really easy, so... You don't sound very introvert. Well, I am. If if uh, I'm more no one on one, I have no problem. But when I'm in a group, like on a workshop, that's mm. more difficult for me to no, to talk. Oh, I in understand that. I need some time to to know the people, and then I can speak freely. Mm. Oh, I get that. I get socially anxious about. The same as you going, you know, workshops, conferences, or oh, just having a, I do a, a little drink beforehand does help me in the evening anyway. <laughs> not not for daytime ones, but in the I evening. Hear you. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um you run you do your own workshops as well, don't you? I love the name. So you're you're the ninja workshop, isn't it? Yeah. Which yeah. is very cool. I love that name, man. Um yeah, that's great. How, how long have you been doing your workshop? Um I have only done it two. Um, okay, cool. This year was supposed to be my third and the fourth one, but it didn't go through, obviously. Um, but it's not for professional, sorry, uh, photographers. Right. It's, it's more for people who um, are on the edge to start uh, a second business on photography, and they need to learn about composition and lightning. And it's more for those people, no professional. That- well, that's great, though, isn't it? Because you're you're able to really kind of impart so much knowledge when they're on the cusp of maybe becoming professional. It's a really mm-hmm. a really important time in someone's uh, potential career, and that you're having a, you know a big influence on, which is really cool. How did you you know why did you think about starting a workshop? Was it a, have you always just wanted to kind of uh, teach, or was there something that happened that made you think I'm I'm going to do a workshop? Um. Yeah, I went to, um, in the beginning of my career, to, uh, you know, the Mont Pelman, the Dutch oh, photographer. So um, I didn't do any wedding photography, and I did sign up for a wedding um, workshop. It was with Amon in Italy. I never done a, a wedding before, so I followed it. And Damon was the one who gave me a kick in the butt to in the right direction, you know, Oh yeah. To find my what what, what my passion in photography is, and oh, I like. Cool. I always will remember uh, the mom as the one who pushed me in the right direction. So oh. with this thought, I would like. Uh, I'd love to see how I can push uh, fresh students in in the right direction. So oh, that's cool. That was my uh, my start to do this workshop. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. It's like, yeah, that's lovely. I, I, I met to... Damon. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. You go. You go on. No, I, I'm, they have to do the journey themselves, but I would like to push them in a, li- a certain direction. That's cool. It's, it's, it's really rewarding, isn't it? You know, I, I, I do workshops as well and it is, <laughs> it is really, it's very rewarding thing to do to be able to kind of, give back as well and share and hopefully you know your attendees take good things from it and it's, it is rewarding 
Yeah, I've I followed workshops before, and you can always learn from from everyone mm. uh, on a workshop, on a conference, even like talking like we are doing right now. But mm. you have to do your own thing with it. So that's the thing isn't it you do have to do your own thing with what you're what you're listening to and, and take it on board and just and put your own spin on it and yeah it's great to see people do that. I, I don't want to be like the mom I want to mm. be me but learn something from the mom you know what I'm saying yes definitely yeah, yeah. so I met him in um he spoke at Elevate I spoke there this year as well in London and I met him for, for okay. the first time he's a lovely guy isn't he he's a larger he's than very- life character He's very energetic. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's funny. I really liked him. I thought it was nice. You can't hate him. No, he's lovely. His it? infectious smile is really, yeah, really nice. Oh, cool. That's really interesting. Okay. Um, so on our family site as well, Christoph, you've mm-hmm. won, um, you've won four awards already: two individuals and two stories, yeah. and um, cats. Cats feature in three of the, your four awards, which I love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> um, including you've an entire family story award where there's a cat in every frame of the story. So yeah. um I presume I presume you're a big cat lover? Are you a big cat lover? Uh, we have three cats at home, so three they cats, are always cool. present. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Can can you tell us about that story, especially that? I mean, I just love I love the way that you've told, you know, a, a different story to what uh, what a lot of people do, you know, by focusing, you know, on, on the, the kind of cat's role in the family. I love the way I love the way family photography can mean so many different kind of meanings of the word family as well. So, yeah, I just wondered if you could what, what are your thoughts on that story with the cat in? Well, it was actually shot in our first lockdown in March and April. Oh, cool. uh, we're okay. back in lockdown again. It was in the first one, so we couldn't leave the house. So it was basically just me and my family. So I wanted to take pictures, and I took pictures every day, um, common situations, you know. And But the cats were always present as well. They, they're part of the family. So mm. so I found yeah, the story that the cats, yeah, the story in the story, the cats were always there. So this is why I entered... Um, this one to the to the awards yeah, apparently the, the judges loved it yeah it's so cool i love it man i love it i just think it's always you know you've been you've been a judge yourself for lots of photography competitions mm-hmm. and you know and i have in the past as well and it is kind of important to see things that are different aren't they that really stand out from the rest yeah, that's and true. That's true. um and obviously that a story with the captain that's going to that's going to stand out but it it still needs to be really good obviously it still need each yeah, frame it, still needs to be really good it, if it's bad uh, composition it, it won't win an award but it it's always good to see something different when you're a judge mm, definitely be- yeah because what, you see, so you as a judge you see thousands of images like tossing the bride in the air but you see 50 or 100 of them so you need to be the different one to to stand out Mm, it's so true isn't it have you got any other like i don't know any other bits of advice for as a judge you know from what you've seen in past any other bits of advice for people um submitting to awards um a piece of advice um try Try different things, like the, the one you mentioned before with the, the lady and, and her back. Uh, mm. if, if I see something which I have never seen before, you got my attention. And then, you, you for me, you have a chance to, to win the award. And I guess it's with other judges as well. So try something different. Try something you haven't seen a million times before. And this way you can you have the opportunity to stand out. Mm, I think that's such good advice. It really is. It really is really good advice. Um, and personally, yourself as well, you've won so many awards from so many different organisations, which is you know sort of amazing. What is it about? What is it about awards for you? You know that keeps you entering. What What do you like about kind of submitting your work and and the whole awards process? What Yeah, what do you like about awards? Um, oh, I am. Um... Like I said, I used to play soccer a lot, so I like competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's cool. But now I don't play anymore, so <laughs> this it is like my little competition. Um, and Did you like when you said when you said you play soccer a lot? Were you looking to do it like professionally or? No, no, no. I I played uh, outdoor soccer and indoor soccer, so it was like 
basically every day uh, every day of of the week but not professional uh, no. uh, okay cool that's cool though so i get you you're competitive though i get that competitive there so now this is my only chance to do something uh, competition wise um but i f- feel like um winning an, an award is like a, a quality label i can present to my clients you know mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's something that i've earned and recognized by the the, well, the wedding community and it's like for me in a, a quality label mm-hmm. yeah. i get that i get that and yeah. i mean similar for me you know um obviously before starting reportage i was i was enough to win things sometimes mm-hmm. and and it gives you you know it's it's such a competitive market isn't it wedding photography family photography anything that can make you kind of stand out from the photographer next door as well and and something that gives you kind of trust in client size as well yeah it uh, it gave me when i won my first uh, award to it gave me the, the the confidence to to do it was like okay this is what i I'm good at, so this is what I want to do, wedding photography. And that's mm. that was uh, what uh, Entering Awards did for me. Mm. And it that's cool. made me, did my best to do better and better and better every wedding. Mm. That's cool, I get that. Yeah, I get that. And obviously, if anyone's listening, people will probably think that I'm obviously very pro awards, obviously with running reportage and family, but I can just, I understand how some people are not into awards and I totally get that as well. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience in that, you know, I get clients book me because they found me through awards or through lists and things. And, and like with you, it gave me confidence as well. That was one of the reasons why I started my own workshops was that um, I was, I got the range finder. Third. It gave me just real kind of confidence in that maybe I'm doing okay, you know, and, and yeah. it's true, isn't it? Anything, because I know I run through periods of low confidence and then higher confidence and lower. Um, so to get something like that, that does help you. Yes, oh. it does. Mm. So th- there are many people who are saying, oh, I'm not good enough to, to enter an award, but try it once. You, you never know. Mm, exactly. That's it. You never know unless you try, isn't it? It's, yeah, true. It's, it's true. But also then don't get despondent if you don't win the first time, because all it is at the end of the day, you know, is 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 the judge's opinions. And, and that's all it is at the end of the day, really. When you look, you come down to it, it's just a few people's or five people's opinions in terms of TIR. And people have different tastes, don't they? You know that as a judge yourself. Yeah, true. Um, I've entered an image five or six times before it won an award. It's just, well, you, you've got to find the right jury for it. If you believe in the image, keep sending it in. Yeah, totally believe that. Totally believe that. Okay, let's change tack again, um, okay. uh, Christoph. What's, has there been, have you seen anything a bit bizarre or funny at a wedding? Have you seen anything really, really strange at all? Really strange? <laughs> uh, <laughs> or funny? As a or, or as a photographer? Or either, any. Either. Yeah, um, we were invited to a wedding once, just uh, the reception in the evening. And just before we got there, uh, the groom kicked his mother-in-law out. <laughs> <gasps> really? <laughs> and had a huge fight and that it was like, okay, this should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> wow, proper kicked her out. Well, yeah, they had an argument, so okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you wish you were photographing that. That would have been a good photo, wouldn't it? That would be perfect, but uh, I wasn't a photographer at that moment, so... No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you... I, I, I would love to go to a wedding now. I think as a guest, but also... Actually, yeah, even photographing one would be good now. But, yeah, I'd love to go to a wedding as a guest now. I just, I would just love that. I would love that. Uh, it's been a while for me since I was a guest. Mm, yeah. Uh, I was a guest at my brother's wedding last year, but I was a photographer as well, so it was... Yeah. Uh, I didn't enjoy it like a, a guest would should do. No, you can't, can you? You can't. No, I, I had some beers, but I had to stay focused as well. So, mm. okay, no problem. Yeah, uh, that, that's cool. Though. That is ex- Did you feel extra pressure with your? It, it was your own brother's wedding, was it? Yeah. Uh, it was my own brother's extra pressure. Oh, no, not exactly. No, <laughs> no it, it was like more. You, you, were, you were in between people you know, you were in family, and at uh, other weddings you don't know anybody, 
now we had the chance to talk to people more. So mm. it was actually more relaxed than, than a normal wedding. That's oh, that's cool. Yeah, well, I've yeah, I've shot a few close friends' weddings, and yeah. I've really I have really enjoyed that. Actually, it's been really nice. And you could have I could have a few drinks on the dance floor while still photographing oh, as gosh. well. That's <laughs> true. Um, have you ever shot over here in in England at all? Uh, not in England, but no. I shot um, a UK couple who came with her entire family to Bruges. Oh, cool. Okay. So it was a UK wedding, but in Belgium. Oh, okay, cool. That's nice. That's that was nice. Uh, some kind of difference. <laughs> they uh, had a genius plan to uh, do their wedding at a, in a brewery. Oh, right. That is a genius plan. <laughs> yeah, so so they, they were all wasted at 11 at the evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a UK wedding. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds proper uk wedding yeah, yeah, with beer pong and everything it was perfect oh cool you know i've never seen beer pong at a wedding yet still not seen no, it no they mm. did <laughs> <laughs> and how do you personally do you uh do you stay really late for your weddings or do you have a kind of set time when you finish you know it's, it's how do you how do you do it um i usually say to my couples um the moment when you start your opening dance, an hour or an hour and a half afterwards, I will be leaving. Right. So okay. I, whether it's eleven or twelve or, or, or ten, I don't care. I stay for a, an hour and a half afterwards. That's cool. I think that's good because you can get a lot of the party in that time frame still, can't you? Yeah, I, I like the party actually. It's like going out at a bang, you know. Mm. Instead of finishing at a boring reception. On the dance floor, it, it's ending with a big bang for me. Mm, that's true. I know that, yeah, I mean, there are some photographers who stay right to the end and much respect to them. Like, But I can't do that. I'm getting too old, man. I can't. I don't have enough energy, I think, to stay right till 2 uh, or 3 a.m. Uh, how old are you, Alan? Well, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't say that on there. No, I can't. Of course, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I will be 40 in January. Yeah, 39 now. Uh, I'm 41, so we are uh, right similar. The same age. And I, I hear you when you say I'm getting too old for this. Mm. When you are 20, you don't need sleep. But <laughs> when, you have kids, <laughs> when you have kids and all, it's more difficult to uh, to do it. That is very true, very true. Especially yeah. next year, because of the corona, um, I have uh, several weekends when I have a Friday and a Saturday, a big wedding. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you couldn't stay to the early hours when you do two in a row, <laughs> no. In a, uh, it will be hard to do it, so, but we see. Oh, man, our fingers crossed for next year as well, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you done... With your family photography, have you done many or any, um, you know, day in the life sessions, kind of like a whole day with a family? Um, I would love to do it more, but the reason where I live in, I, it, for some reason, I don't get it sold. I, I don't know why, yeah. but I would I love to do it more. Yeah. yeah, I think it's still a tricky maybe a tricky thing that people a lot of people just don't know it it exists as a as an option as well i know that's one I thing that yeah that I, do my, that. I do my best putting the word out but if, you know, not enough feedback at this moment but i will keep mm. on trying it because yes, I, really definitely love, I really love the documentary style of family photography if, uh, mm. so do i and i think part of it is just upping the the knowledge that it exists and and showing people the value of it and, and not just you personally but me mm -hmm. as with tir family you know just upping that overall presence of it as well because yeah. obviously people have gr it's known that weddings are these big important thing that need to be photographed and a lot of people just don't know that they can spend a whole day with a photographer and not having to be posing and they're going to get all these natural moments of their family which are so invaluable they just don't know that can happen uh, no no I, you know, I believe you yeah mm. it's it's equally important to have those kind of images images than a, than a wedding i think yeah i mean you could argue it's even you know you could argue that they're, they're even more important than a wedding you know you could say that there's no right or wrong yeah. but some people yeah true, true. Um, have you ever had your own family photographed by someone no. else? No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, cool. You should do that. You should do that. 
Yeah, yeah. Let's do a swap. Come, you come to Cornwall in England. I'll come over to Belgium and we'll do it. And why not? <laughs> it would be why cool. Not? Yeah. <laughs> so we have the chance to come to Belgium finally. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and we'll do that. I'll shoot your family. We'll do a TIR meetup as well. We'll do that. It'll be good. Okay, whenever it's allowed, we get in touch. Yes, we'll do it. We'll do it. And you could come down here in Cornwall. So I live in in Cornwall in England, which is right by the coast in the southwest. It's really pretty down here. So you're very welcome to come down. Okay. <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> we will. We will. Um, you mentioned, you know, well, we both spoke about getting old there and, and oh, the future really and things. <laughs> I know 40 early 40 um yeah I'm gonna actually I'm gonna have my 40th birthday in January we'll probably we might even be in lockdown which is a bit of a shame but anyway bigger bigger things have happened this year anyway it doesn't matter yeah. but um deep but in general Christoph do you do you think about the future you know whether you'll still be you know photographing weddings and families in in 10 years time do you think think about that at all no no, no. that's good <laughs> no no my wife is more like, what if, you know, and, uh, and I'm more like, oh, let's see what, what it is at the moment itself. I, mm. I'm not, I don't worry about the future. That's yes. not me. No. That's, it's good, though, isn't it, to be like that, I think, and live in the present more. But I understand it. it's difficult as well. It's difficult. No, uh, it's, I don't say it's bad to have a plan B or something or think about, but I'm, uh, it's not for me. Not my no. thing. That's good. That's good. Good way to be. That is a good way to be. Um, and it was, as you mentioned earlier, you know, when all this Corona hit, um, you know, did you, it sounds like you didn't panic and that you just changed tact and was, became more proactive. And I think that's a yeah. great way to, to be. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't like to do nothing. So to, the mm. proactive thing was perfect for me this year. And it's, I reach more people this way also. More people know my name right now and they know they can email me to, to do a, a story. So it, mm. it wasn't this bad this year. The, well, that's, that's good. And also, it puts you in better stead for next year as well. You know, as you say, you've yeah. become known more and, and more prominent marketing-wise. So that's going to have a good knock-on effect for your business going forward as well. And yeah. I, I also just think doing something for me, you know, obviously not for everyone, but doing something for me just makes me happier. Even even if what I do maybe isn't successful, just just by doing something makes me happier, I think. Yeah, true. True. Mm, that's true. Anyway, but man, but it has been a roller coaster for me. I've been up and down this time. I, I really yeah. have. It's strange. Um, Christoph, have you ever met or photographed anyone famous at all? Um, yeah. Uh, well, it's not not famous people you will know, but famous in Belgium. Okay, I've cool. Shot, I've shot some, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> not not giving me any names. Give me a, give me a name. Give me a name. Um, oh, um, names. Um, the famous comedian Jacques Vermeide. You probably don't know. Um, no. Famous singer. Oh, cool though. Yeah, no, you, you will you won't know the names, but um. Oh, okay. I, I, uh, I did some uh, interviews. Some somebody else did some interviews with those people, and I was allowed to uh, take some pictures afterwards. Okay, cool. So, but <laughs> shooting my first—it's always stressful to uh, meet famous people. Uh, <laughs> it was like always an hour drive, and I was so nervous when I got uh, there with these people in their houses. And the first thing I always needed to ask was, uh, "Can I go to the bathroom?" <laughs> <laughs> You know, I I totally appreciate that. Yeah, I understand. That. <laughs> so, 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 uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm like that on the way to every wedding. I have to pull over and have a little nervous wee before I get there every time. Yeah, and after this, it's stress is away, and then go for it. But in the beginning, it's all. Mm, yeah i totally get that so uh, i yeah i always talk about nerves but i do so you've been shooting as you say like 10 years and you still get nervous and i've been shooting for like eight years and i still get nervous as well um i'd love to be one of the, someone who doesn't get nervous wouldn't that be good though don't you think well i don't some healthy nerves are okay i think mm, it, i it, guess so it means like you you're still want to do a good job i think 
That's true, isn't it? That is true. That is true. Um, oh. And do you, do you get nervous kind of when you, at the end of the process, when you're delivering your images to your wedding clients or your family clients, do you get nervous then at all or, or, or not? Oh, not really nervous, but it's always, uh, you not know how the reaction will be. Will they be mm. happy? But I never had a bad reaction, so I feel confident it will be will be good. You know? That is good, man. I'm touching wood for you, but that is good. That just shows how, what great job you do. You know, that's that's super. Mm-hmm. Um, Christoph, what's yes. the first? What's the <laughs> what's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say what makes you happy? First thing, yeah, uh, little things in life, you know. That's cool. Um, like, for example, um, my oldest daughter plays soccer um, oh, cool. with with the boys. She's in a boys team, and when you see like a, an opponent saying, uh, looking like at her, for hmm, I'm playing against a girl, and then she kicks his butt for <laughs> nine minutes. That makes me smile. <laughs> That's very you know? cool. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 Just the little things in life. Yeah. That's cool. Lovely. How many kids have you got? Two. Two daughters. Oh, two daughters. Wow. Nice, man. Cool. Cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're outnumbered like three to one in your oh, household. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. <laughs> Are they both into soccer? No, no. The, the, I have the eldest one is soccer and getting dirty in, and the, the youngest one is like more dancing and stuff and, you know, oh, cool, girl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very different. Oh, that's nice. I, I don't mind them them being different. Oh, yeah, it. that's good, isn't it? Yeah, that is good. It's so. Fu- I, I I've got a daughter and a boy. Um, yeah. Okay. I I remember when we were expecting our first child. You know, stereotypically, a lot of you know, as a guy, you're supposed to want a boy. You know, that's stereotypically. But I really wanted a girl. You know, I really wanted a girl, and. I don't know why I'm talking about this now, but I did. I really, and, I, and, I, and, and I got a girl and I just, I just, yeah, I just thought, I thought I was going to be able to be more paternal to a girl. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think that, that's obviously not right, but that's what I thought. And, but yeah, how about you? I mean, I, I, you love being a dad to girls, I imagine. Yeah, I like it. I, I don't have the experience on having a boy, but I don't miss it, you know? Uh, yeah. I, I like girls. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never had the want, uh, the need to have a boy. We never had it. So. No. no, no, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. No, I love it. It's all good. And both, both are good. If anyone's listening, that has, it all is good. All is good. All is but good. yeah, but two, I don't know about you, but two children is definitely enough for me. Two children is oh, enough. for me as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you have a family store, a uh, repertoire when you have, uh, you know, divorced families who got together and they have five kids or six kids. Ooh, that's not for me. You no. know, yeah, that is a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> With two as well, there's like there's two adults. You two pairs of hands. You can yeah. look after one child each. I don't understand what happens when you get to three. Like, I just like, what would I do? <laughs> the car, the car is big enough just for the four of you. So yes, that's true. How and how. How do you find the balance of being a dad, but also being, you know, a photographer who's kind of away at the weekends a lot? You know, how how, how have you found it? Um, but to be honest, in the beginning, I did a lousy job finding the balance because mm. I had a day job from 7.30 to 5. Oh, okay, right. And then the photography as a second business, but I was working every evening until oh, one at night, two at night, to be back at yeah. the other work at seven, you know. Mm. And there, that moment I did a bad job in um, finding balance. But since I became full-time photographer two years ago, it's a new world for me. I have time in the morning to see my kids, to bring them to school, um, even getting them from school in, at, uh, at noon and in the evening. So I see them more, and now they find uh, they understand it more why i have to be away at saturday for a wedding because i see them more now in the week oh you know? that's cool yeah definitely it, well, that's... It, was a bit, it was a struggle to find the right balance but once you find it 
you're much happier and the kids are happier and the whole family is it's better for the family that's that, true mm. Mm. That's cool. Well, that sounded that sounded difficult when you were working in a full time job as well as doing the weddings. That must have been a tough, tough period. Uh, yeah, because on the, in the night I was on the day job. I was always busy. Oh, I, tonight I have to do this sort of photography and this. It was always with photography in my mind, but too less time to actually do it well. So. Mm, I am happy tough. I made the decision to become a full-time photographer. Mm, and what, why did you make that decision at that point? You know, did you have, you know, a certain number of weddings booked in for the following year? So you had confidence you were going to get that income or had you just had enough of working, you know, the two jobs together? What, what was it for you that made you at that point in time decide, right, I'm going to do photography full-time? Well, I knew, I, I, I felt this was the thing for me. I had confidence. Mm. I knew I could do, could deliver a good job, um, but it was more financially, you know. Uh, mm. Oh yeah. If you look at this year, it's it's a pain in the uh, it's it's a struggle when you just started now on a full time photographer, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, but for me, it was always like when I did a big travel, I always came home with uh, new plans. So I followed um, the. Uh, I forgot the name right now. Oh. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> the, the the fearless workshop in um yeah the workshop in, in Texas and uh, with Tyler was my mentor and Citlali Rico was my mentor. Oh, cool! Like the foundation thing. I found out. Uh, oh, it, it's a shame I forgot the name. Sorry, sorry, we um, That's okay. um and I got home and it was my they taught me this was the right thing to do to become. It was the next step in my uh, in my career. That's cool. That's Sorry, cool. it was a bit. <laughs> oh no, that's all great. No, that's cool. Wow, I mean that that's had a big effect on you. Then that foundation to come back and then change, yeah, to do it full time, mm, big deal. Yeah, yeah, it was always. Yeah, it, it's a big decision to do it, but it was yeah, it was the right time. That's cool. That's cool. Good, good stuff. It's good to hear. And it's it's always scary, isn't it, when you do make that decision, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's obviously worked out very well for you man very well but yeah as you as you alluded to there you may, you may, I, I feel so much of maybe photographers who maybe went full-time from like january this year you know yeah. or or winter last year what an awful unfortunate time to be getting into this you know it's awful yeah but but i always say don't waste a good crisis so <laughs> go for it there are always possibilities but you just need to find them Mm, that's true nope. i've not heard that phrase before that's a great phrase so, never wasted good crisis so uh, that's a good one that's a good one or <laughs> something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i always tease my wife that i'm gonna get a tattoo when because I, I go to las vegas for the wi every year and i tease her that i'm gonna get a tattoo when i'm but i never have i never have have you got a tattoo no i haven't i haven't no okay <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us do. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm saying it for 20 years. I'm going to have one, but it never. Uh, never. I think. I I think I I'm, I'm just not good with pain in general, so I don't think I would uh, be very good. At that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Christoph, have yes. you ever made? Have you ever made any really memorable mistakes at all? Oh uh, yes, I made an epic one. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little story. Um, I, it, um, I needed to do a civil wedding, just a civil wedding and some pictures, family pictures afterwards, just uh, one hour, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was at 11 in the morning and my youngest daughter had uh, needed to go to dance repetition at 10 and my eldest daughter at soccer, you know, and my wife and I just went separate. And my wife would come and meet me at uh, the dancing, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I left off, switched cars, and I went to the wedding. It was like made major, uh, major crowd, 200, 250 people was like, okay, showtime. And I opened my trunk of the car, and damn, I had no gear with me. Oh, no. We, sw we switched cars, and yeah, <laughs> my gear was in the other car. So, uh, <gasps> Oh, damn. my, what a nightmare. It was a very well-known family in my town, and... Everybody was there, and we stood there without the gear. So, 
luckily my wife made it in time to bring my gear and <gasps> yeah uh-huh. it's, it's an epic mistake you know <laughs> oh that's a story yeah, <laughs> yeah. ever had this before you forgot something or uh, oh what the whole all my no not yet not all my equipment but i'm sure that sounds <laughs> happening <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny i love hearing about stories like that i love it and it's all good it's all, yeah. <laughs> it's all good um yeah i missed the cake cutting once missed the whole cake cutting because um well they just didn't come and find me i was just uh having a bit of lunch and you missed the whole cake cutting okay yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and i did actually once i mean I, I i missed i was i pre-focused for like the first kiss you know i was ready there i pre-focused even and then the camera just for some reason just went bar me and it just did not focus for the first kiss so i missed the first kiss and and i i knew i'd missed it as well and that kind of put me you know put me on edge then for like the rest for a good two hours yeah. i was yeah. i was scared that i missed it um but then yeah when i delivered my images they they i got really good feedback and they didn't even mention it you know so oh but yeah no so, sometimes the clients don't even notice you you are stressful or you missed something but that's okay mm-hmm. and we're all we're all humans at the end of the day we make mistakes we make mistakes. sure everyone makes mistakes yeah i'm blaming my camera for that one i'm blaming my yeah. camera <laughs> always blame the camera <laughs> <laughs> oh man Christoph, i've really enjoyed talking to you thank you this has been so good i think we've got time um just for one more question that's okay, okay. No problem. um let's leave on quite a big one but um what hey. would be what would be your top tips Christoph, to help someone become better at the documentary side of photography um you know it could it could be advice about weddings or family or both you know so but specifically the documentary side of what we do what would be what would be your advice to get better at that um my advice is it's actually when you go to my website the first sentence you will read is i let people be themselves Mm. and i don't say anything during a day almost anything just let people let them be themselves They, they Mm. If they are boring, okay, they are boring. If they are funny, then then shoot them uh, as a funny, funny family or a or a couple. Um, mm. So that is my that's my major advice. Let them be themselves, and also mm. uh, learn how to fail. To, to try different uh, compositions. Try something different. If it fails, okay, you've tried it. So don't be afraid to try something new. Mm. No. I think those those two bits are great. Let people be themselves and don't be afraid to, yeah, to fail. Learn to fail. That's that's great advice, man. Mm, really yeah, is. Oh man, Christoph, I've really enjoyed talking to you. It's been really yeah, fun. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, thank you, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being so really, really out of my comfort zone because I'm not used to be in a in the spotlight, you know, but I had oh, a fun alan oh great thank you i'm really glad you enjoyed it man as well um yeah thank you for doing it and i understand it's yeah totally out of your comfort zone and uh, but you were great man totally natural thank totally you. natural and doing it in a different language which i have such respect for yeah, i think that's amazing that was another point sometimes you have to think of words and think of what you want to say and you know but oh okay. yeah <laughs> oh you're brilliant absolutely perfect and honestly i have so much respect for doing this it's scary enough but doing it in a different language as well honestly massive respect massive it's respect <laughs> oh thank you i loved it really great and I was, anyone who's listening do head to this reportage.com or this reportage family.com and i'll include the uh reportage awards that uh christoph spoke about there um and oh, i should put that cat story in as well because i think that's awesome yeah. very very cool um and hopefully we'll get to to meet one day man that'd be nice we'll do that shoot swap i'll come to belgium we'll do it or you come to cornwall yes i love it <laughs> <laughs> awesome Matt. well you stay safe and um yeah and i'll, I'll hopefully meet you one day perfect thank you alan Have no nice problem day. and you bye-bye thank you You've been listening to the 52nd episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. Christoph was so fab to talk to. Hope you enjoyed listening. Head to thisisreportage.com or thisisreportagefamily.com to see the specific reportage awards that Christoph spoke about on the episode, as well as the Family Story Award with the cats that he talked about too, as well as a link through to his website. 
We have lots more episodes of the podcast released with photographers such as Christian Levin, Else Corsten, Darren Kerwin, Nicole Asteris, and many more too. If you're not yet a member of this reportage or this reportage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers and much more too. We're currently accepting submissions to our final collections of 2020. The deadline is the same for our wedding site, This Reportage, and our family site, This Reportage Family. Submit by 2359 GMT on 23rd of November 2020. No poses, nothing staged, this is Reportage. And this is bye for now. Mm-hmm.